I don't want to be your buddy, Rick. I just want a little breakfast. Well, you can call me Miss Folsom if you want to. Sheila, we stop serving breakfast at 11.30. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, hey, I'm really sorry, too. Get a gun! Ever have one of those days? The mundane everyday life tends to overshadow how quickly our lives can change and how much of that is up to the decisions we make. We don't even consider most of the things we could do at a given moment because of how crazy they would be and what consequences would follow. But what if you didn't care about the end result and just did what you felt like? This want and even need to break moral and societal norms is a big part of the popularity of gaming. You get to be a part of a whole nother world in the way that you want. Even still, most games follow some sort of moral standard, how low it may be. Though there is one exception that instantly comes to mind. In 1997, American video game development studio Running With Scissors created what was destined to become one of the most infamous games of its time, and it went by the name of Postal. The logical assumption that good exposure is the best kind of exposure in human culture is wrong, this has been proved all throughout human history, but now more than ever. With the rise of social media and the internet, we see that the information which reaches the very top of, whether it be a news site or Twitter or whatever, is more often than not negative. It's some problem in the world or some bad thing someone has said or done. For whatever reason, humans tend to dwell on the negative and overlook the positive. Just like many people, and even other game studios have done in the past, Running With Scissors chose this property of the human condition as the drive for their upcoming title. Postal wasn't a game that had phenomenal graphics or gameplay. It was a somewhat stereotypical isometric shooter and played exactly like you would expect it to. Though it may have its charm, neither were ever the main selling point. The name Postal comes from the title of the player character, the Postal Dude. But what does postal mean? In this context, postal comes from the phrase to go postal, which essentially means to go mad or crazy. This aspect is portrayed in the game's story which follows the postal dude, who believes that the US Air Force has released a poison gas in his hometown and he is the only one unaffected by it. This causes him to go postal and massacre everyone so he can get to the Air Force base. Just like other games about terrorism and similar themes, postal got people riled up. Everything had gone according to plan. Even though it wasn't amazingly successful, with criticism on the lack of depth in the gameplay elements producing mostly moderate scores on reviews, it was enough and the Postal series was born. With the moderate success of the first game, a sequel was due, and in 2003 Postal 2 was released. It instantly found itself surrounded in criticism, with some calling it the worst product ever foisted upon customers, and this is exactly what it wanted. The main changes from the last title were the switch of engine. Postal 2 was made in Unreal Engine 2, and had now become a first person shooter, with the levels now being open world. The story spans a week, where the protagonist, the postal dude, has to do mundane everyday tasks like get milk, confess sins or cash out a check. These tasks, however, can be done in any way you want to, with the game's tagline solidifying this by saying, remember, it's only as violent as you are. Even with this, the game features heavy stereotypes and quite extreme violence. Due to this, Postal 2 has been banned in several countries, like Australia and New Zealand. Even with such actions being taken against the game, it became the fastest selling game of the Linux game publishing in its first month. The game has since went off to sell more than 2 million copies according to Steam Spy. Due to the immense success of the Postal series, a film by Yue Bowl based on both of the games was released in 2007. But this wasn't it for Postal 2. In 2004, an expansion pack called Apocalypse Weekend was available for purchase. Like the title would suggest, it is a two day long gore fest with an explosive ending. It added new guns and enemies and was overall quite good, though the gameplay is more linear than that of the main game.
But all tales eventually end in disaster, and the Postal series is sadly no exception in this regard. Unlike Valve, the developers were not scared of the number 3, and in 2011, Running With Scissors in collaboration with Trashmaster Studios released Postal 3. With the third and final installment of the series, Running With Scissors had switched back to the third-person perspective of the first game, taking out the isometric feel. While change can be good for a game series, this time it really wasn't, making the game feel like a clone of Just Cause, but without any of the cool stuff. This coupled with the flawed programming, and a story that could have been written by a 7 year old, sadly marked the end of the Postal series. Or did it? 2015 saw Running With Scissors returning to the Postal franchise, with a new expansion for Postal 2, titled Paradise Lost. It takes place after the Apocalypse Weekend, on the same map. It is again 5 days long, and features a few new weapons, boss fights, and an actually good story, with some even calling it better than the base game. Running with Scissors had redeemed themselves. A controversial franchise, good and bad, this was the Postal series.